This is Bread for Daily Living, and I'm your host, Patty Wimmers. And we're going to be talking on our next four programs about healing. And uh, I want to start with this scripture, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Surely he hath borne our sicknesses, weaknesses, our distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God, as if with leprosy. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our guilt and our iniquities, the chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and with his stripes that wounded him we are healed and made whole. Father, help us to really truly understand that you are the healer and that you came, you died on the cross for our sins to be forgiven, and you took the stripes on your back for us to be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. In First Peter 2.24, it says the same thing. It says that, you know, that he was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes we are healed. In the Old Testament, it's will, that you will be healed, but in the New Testament, it's we are already are healed. God did not uh, create Adam and Eve to be sick. I think a lot of times we just think, you know, well, I have to be sick, you know, or I need to suffer. There, you know, there may be circumstances where you, you have a lot of things you have to do in order to receive your healing. But I, the most important thing to realize is that he wants you healed. You go through the New Testament and he healed everybody that came up to him and asked for, the, for healing. He may have said, you know, what What do you want? I remember the, the blind man. I thought, oh, that's crazy. Obviously, he's blind. But he asked the blind man what he really wanted. And then the blind man said to see. And then another one, he said, do you really want to be made whole? And, you know, sometimes we think, well, I really do. But remember, if you really do want to be made whole, then you're going to be responsible. You may have to go back to work. You know, there are things you're going to have to do. And um, we have to search our own selves. Anyway, healing is for everyone. Bat, you've got to get that in your head. You need to say that. Healing is for everyone. Jesus went to the cross for that healing. Even when Israel came out of Egypt, there was not one sick among them. In Exodus 15:26, it says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. Now, that doesn't mean you don't go to doctors. Please don't go saying, oh, Patty said, no. no, I never said that. Never said that. I'm saying to go to God first. That's all. And we'll talk about that at another, uh, and I believe it's in the last one where we talk about, you know, if you didn't get healed, why didn't you get healed? So uh, the number one thing to receive your healing is to believe. Now, if you're not believing for it, and I know that I have prayed for people and I, I knew God wanted to heal them. And at that time, I was having an issue with my hip. We had uh, changed mattresses, and um, it didn't work too well. It really, you know, just it caused a problem. And um, and I was just, you know, the Lord said, no, I'm going to heal you. Just, you know, keep walking. So I just kept walking. And um, I went to pray for this one woman, and I, I knew, I just really knew that God wanted to heal her. She didn't receive it. And so... When it hit her, and she didn't receive it, it bounced back on me, and I received my healing of my hip. You know, so, you know, if in um, one of the cities, Jesus said he could do no mighty works. Didn't mean he didn't heal anyone, but he couldn't do anything really great or significant because of their doubt and unbelief. So that's the first thing. So I, I want to just go to Mark 11, and I know... There are people say, oh, and claim it, name it, and claim it, name it, and claim it. You, you know, you can't do it. Nobody's naming it and claiming it. And this, this, trust me, not doing that. What we're doing is claiming God's word. That's all. If he said it, that settles it. Nevertheless, that's what God said. Truly, I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will be t take place, it will be done for him. I remember Paul Crouch once talked about, you know, this mountain moving face, and, he, you know, people don't believe it. They, their signal when they first started the television station in California, it wasn't getting across the mountains. So he prayed, and when he prayed, it went through, and there was no problem. So that was mountain moving face. 
For this reason I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe. Believe. Trust and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against one, forgive him and let it drop and leave it go so that God can forgive you. You do need to forgive. You know, you can't just, you know, well, I'm just name it and claim it. There's no such thing as name it and claim it. That, that just doesn't work. You can only claim something if it's on a written document. If I have an insurance policy and it says, you know, that if I, certain things happen, I can claim the money. Like, for example, for your health. You know, uh, when I go to get a prescription, I am claiming what is on the document that says that they will pay for that prescription. And that's what you're doing here. You're not naming it and claiming it. You're claiming what the document states as a fact. And the fact is, if you believe what you're saying, it will happen. Sometimes we keep saying to ourselves, oh, I can't do it, I can't, I can't, and eventually you can't. Or you tell a child, you know, you're stupid or whatever, and they end up being that way. But if you tell them, oh, you can do this, you know, maybe they won't be able to do it at, at some extreme high level, but they will be able to accomplish that, that they are doing, rather than failing at it. God does not want us to fail. All right, then, um, just, you know, just really hold on to what God is saying. Uh, and oh, Matthew eleven fifty eight is the one that, that um, it tells you where he, he could do no mighty works um, in, um, let's see if it says the city here. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Anyway, in Matthew eleven fifty eight, 58, if you want to look it up, it says uh, he could not do mighty works because of their unbelief. So if you have unbelief or doubt, then don't expect anything to happen because it's not going to. Or if you're wavering, in James it talks about, you know, a man who wavers between two opinions is very unstable. And so we don't want to, well, maybe, uh, well, I don't know, really, I believe, no, I'm not sure. You know, you got to get into belief 100%, you know, that you really believe and not wavering in doubting. And if you are doubting, then just get a hold of the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Begin to listen to healing tapes, you know, begin to listen to music, you know, praise songs and start praising the Lord. So we're just going to get a hold of the fact that Jesus really wants us well. I mean, there, you know, he, he, he wants us to be well. He is not into making us sick. And, um, and biblical healing, and again, in Exodus 15, 26, there was, it says there was not one sick that came out of Egypt. Now, you know that they had been sick, obviously. I mean, you know, they were working hard. You know, they may have even had uh, physical things where they fell down or they got hit with a shovel or something. And, and uh, it says that that was all healed. They were all healed completely and totally. And um, when you take communion, even, and uh, let's look at that in First Corinthians First um, Corinthians 11:29. For anyone, uh, okay. It says when you get ready to eat the Lord's Supper, okay. And I know that most pastors will tell you this: be thoroughly examine yourself. Look at yourself. You know, you know what have I done? I remember when um, my aunt asked me once, well. I prayed and I told her and she said well you need to add something to it and I'm like she didn't say I need to take away but I need to add and I said what she said you need to add and ask God to forgive you of your sins every day and I was like well that sounds like a good thing to do so I continued to do that and that's what it's saying right here for anyone who eats and drinks without discriminating and recognizing that this is the Lord Jesus then you know there's going to be judgment upon him uh, you know, you don't want to do it carelessly. You need to search and examine yourself or your shortcomings. And it said, basically, if you do not, it says if you do not, eat, you know, eat it the right way, then it says that you actually can be sick or even die. You can go back and read it. I don't want to read every word. It would, you know, take, it's very, and I have the Amplified Bible, which, you know, has a lot of words. But that's basically what it's saying. When you look at it, you know, did I do something wrong? I asked for forgiveness. Do I really have Jesus in my heart when I take communion? And then um, to look and see. And if you do, then the healing is going to come. But if you're doing it the wrong way, and then it says that some of you are asleep, and some of you are even uh, uh, sick or dead. Okay? 
And in the Old Testament, which is really kind of weird, uh, it Jesus even mentions this. He says, you know, that uh, it wasn't even the Israelites that got healed, which is really, you know, uh, an interesting uh, fact. You go in Second uh, Kings 5, and uh, you find um, Naaman the leper, and uh, he had a little Jewish girl that worked with worked for him, and she went to her mistress and she said, you know, if you could just tell Naaman if he would go to the prophet, he would be healed, and um, of the leprosy. So they did, and he went to the king, and the king said, you know, you're crazy. I don't know anything, you know. So he did go. And uh, he found a, him, and he expected him to do some marvelous thing. And he said, go dip in the Jordan River seven times, and you'll be clean. And he didn't want to do that. And his uh, servant with him said, you know, if he'd asked you to do some great thing, you would have done it. Why don't? Why not just try it? You know, even though Jordan River's dirty and whatever, go ahead and do it. And he did, and he was completely made whole. And Naaman was a Syrian. He was not a Jew. But he was healed. And it does not give any more reference of others that, you know, got healed that were actually uh, Jewish, you know, the, it, it, it's amazing. They'd seen all these miracles. They'd heard about all these miracles. And I know I was reading the other day in the Bible, and I was like, okay, um, yeah, I'm having issues with that. We don't go back and remember the miracles we've had in our own lives. So then when we have a need, we think, oh, God won't do it. And, of course, that's ridiculous because if, if it says, you know, be anxious for nothing and everything with prayer, everything with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto the Father for his peace and will keep you in perfect peace. And, and, you know, he does. He wants you well. And, and I think we have to really get that in our head. He wants, you know, but you don't understand that this is, this is a permanent thing. This they tell me can't be healed. And there's no such thing. He healed leprosy. And it definitely, at that time, there was no medication or anything for it. Blindness, people that were blind were able to see. People that were deaf were able to hear. People that were dumb and couldn't talk were able to do that. People that were demon-possessed were delivered and set free. You know, he, he, he wants you to be healed. In um, 2 Kings 20, well, there was a little widow, remember, and her son died. And the prophet prayed and brought him back to life. But she was not a Jew, you know. And then she began to really believe, you know, that, that Jesus was uh, was real. There was a real God, the God of pa God, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, if you're listening and you're Jewish, you know, he, Jesus is your Yeshua Hamashiach, and uh, He wants you well. Uh, and if you don't believe in Jesus, just go back to the Old Testament, and read all the healings that are there, and realize that if He wanted you well, I mean, what kind of a God would it be that would want you to be sick? I don't, I don't believe that. I know that sometimes we just don't seem to get our healing or it seems to go on. I remember my mom told me when I was real little, I, I had allergies. And this would have been back in 1947 or so. And um, she, she prayed. She says, this is what she prayed. She said, Lord, either heal her allergies or find a medicine that would work. And he found a medicine that would work. It was the very first allergy medication to go on the market. And, uh, you know, and I'm like, you know, Lord, why haven't you healed, you know? So I pray the same thing for my son. I said, Lord, give him a medicine that will work. If you're not going to heal him right now, I don't understand because I know you're the healer. And I've seen you heal him many times from severe attacks. You know, just uh, do so. And most of the time, you know, the medicine and everything works. They may have to change it periodically. You know, and don't go around saying to people, oh, you're sick because, you know, you didn't do something right. Well, that may be true, but that's not always the case. Job hadn't done anything wrong, but he was sick, but he got healed. He got healed. Remember that. He got healed. In Luke uh, 13, verses 11 and 12, there was a little woman in the, in the synagogue that was all bent over and had been bent over for 18 years. And the Lord said, why, she should be able to be healed. You know, and he cast out the spirit of infirmity in her. So it was a, an infirm spirit. It was an actual spirit. And then she stood up straight. And she was completely healed. She was made whole. He said, this is, you know, she's a woman of Abraham. Why shouldn't she be healed? Mm. She was someone of Abraham. She's a child of Abraham. Why shouldn't she be healed? So if you're Jewish, you're a child of Abraham. So why shouldn't you be healed? And then um, at the pool of Bethesda. 
you know, oh, well, you know, I, 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 I just can't get myself down in there, you know, and, you know, he gives all these, I, complain, 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 and Jesus just said, you know, well, just take up your bed and walk, and he did, and he was healed, you know, and then there's the, the centurion, you know, he just said, you know, just speak the word, and, and I know, I know you are a man under authority, and like me, I'm under, I have people under authority under me. I tell one to go, and he goes. I tell one to come, and he comes. He says, I know that you're under authority, and all you need to do is speak, and my um, servant will be healed. You don't need to come and visit. You just need to say the word. In Isaiah 11, uh, or Isaiah 55, verse 11, it says, he sent forth his word, and uh, it, it accomplished that for which it was sent. So if he sends forth healing, it will accomplish that healing. And in Psalms 107 verse 20, it says he sent his word and he healed them. So, you know, we want you to be healed. And and then there was a little woman, remember, she came up and she touched the hem. She said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. If I just touch the hem, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And, the, and Jesus said, the power went out from me. And he looked at her and he says, your face has made you whole. <coughs> Excuse me, your faith. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. You need to hear the word of God. You need to hear it on a daily basis. You need to get it into your heart. You need to have it so much in your heart that when something comes up, it just comes right out. It just says, no, don't do that. Yes, you're healed. And I'll just tell you exactly what to do because that's what God does. He puts his word. David said, I hid the word in my heart that I would not sin against the Lord. you got to have the word of God in your heart. If it's not, whatever's in your heart will come out. Cursing. Why do you still curse? Because that's what's in you. Why are you still negative? Because that's what's in you. Why do you demean other people and try to get them uh, to hurt them? Because that's what's in you. It's not the love of God that's shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which is in Romans. I mean, you know, just, you really, and that's Romans 5. You've got to get a hold of it. God loves you. What parent would want their child sick? None. What teacher wants her students sick? What teacher who works with ESC students we do anything to get those kids healed or at least so that they can learn and they can, you know, be a part of society and feel good about themselves. We want them well. If we, human beings, fallible, not always good, not always having a good attitude, I know I've been really dealing with some of that here lately, and not, you know, it's like... Um, that's just not the way it needs to be. I need to get a hold of God. And I can't get a hold of God unless I get a hold of His Word. Now, I know I usually, you know, use my phone to, to read from because it's just easier for me. But you can see this is well used. It's, it is definitely falling apart. And I've used it over many years. And I'm so thankful my eyes are healed that I can do that. I had... Uh, they have a laser treatment here recently in both eyes and they're right back to normal again now where I can see really good which is great I can pick up the Bible and read it but if you don't have this you can't have it in your heart if you don't read it or listen to it you, you, you gotta have it in your heart otherwise it's, you know this is faith comes by hearing hearing by the word so I can't have faith without the Word of God God loves you he wants you well he wants you well you, you know four ways for your healing you can get deliverance which is what we just talked about the woman with the uh, bent over the spirit of infirmity forgiveness um, where at the pool of Bethesda he said you know was it easier for me to say for him to be forgiven or to be healed uh, speaking the word, which is what the centurion said, you know, if you'll just speak the word, they'll be healed. And then the little woman with the issue of blood, who with faith, faith got her healed. So those four things will help you to be healed. Deliverance, which you, you know, you, Lord, deliver me from whatever it is I need. My heart, I have to forgive those that have ought against me. 
and I need to speak the word instead of, oh, I'm so sick, I'm just miserable, and you just go on and on and on. You know, people love to hear all the bad things going on about you, but whenever you start talking about good things and how things are going well, they don't want to hear that. And I'm going to leave that there. And uh, so you, you need to speak the word. So I can't speak the word if it's not in me. And by faith. And I can't have faith if the word isn't in me. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Father, we just ask that you would help us to, to realize you are the deliverer. You do forgive us. And that your word is true. And it does work. And we can claim it because it is part of our covenant promises. And by faith we can receive your promises. Lord, if there's any out there right now that are sick and they're just saying, you know, I just don't feel like I can get healed, or maybe they're having to go through surgery, or they are in the process of seeing whether, you know, the cancer is in remission, uh, or they're in the process of taking medication that the Lord has directed them to go ahead to the doctor, and they're believing for healing. Lord, just touch them right now. Touch them right now touch their heart touch their their legs their their hips lord touch their shoulders touch their head touch their minds so that they will think on what's ever lovely pure and of good report and lord and touch their hands that they will do the right thing and that they will use their hands and their whole being in order to preserve and to help you lord to to get the word of God out because you ask us to be salt and light and to preach your word. You ask us to do that. Help us to ha be healed from head to toe, fingernail to fingernail, so that we can be a witness for you. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And let that be bread for your daily living. All of your offerings to Bread for Daily Living are tax deductible. If you would like our newsletter, or catalog of materials, please write to the address on the screen or email. Thank you for watching Bread for Daily Living.